Good evening, St. John's. So I've got to let you know I'm having something of a crisis these days, and this is it. I love the Netflix Netflix series The Crown. I love it. I love the costumes. I love the screenplays. I love the acting. I love it all. Uh, I've been watching it for three years now, and now it's the fourth season. And if you don't know the series The Crown, it it's a, it tells the story of Queen Elizabeth uh, and moving forward in the royal family. It pick, each episode picks an episode in the their history and then dramatizes it. So the dialogue's fictionalized. Of course, we don't know what happens behind closed doors. But part of what I've loved about this is what a the job they do with Elizabeth. They show her to be someone who is so complex, someone who has to stand at the middle of so many systems and retain a sense of poise and balance and neutrality. Um, there's one in s episode in the first season where I even love the theology of it, so I'm quite a fan. However, as each season progresses, we're getting further, more and more <laughs> close to the current times. Right now, season four is out, and it's in the 80s. Suddenly, we're looking at the story of Charles and Diana's marriage. Um... And I'm starting to get uncomfortable with this series, and this is a spiritual meditation. It's not a, a review of, for Netflix, so let me tell you what makes this a meditation and why I'm uncomfortable. We're getting closer and closer to sharing dirty secrets in a fictionalized way of living people. Charles and Camilla are still alive. Elizabeth and Philip are alive. Harry and William are alive. These are real people, and if anything, this show is revealing them to be real people just like us, which on one hand makes me increasingly compassionate towards them. That says, my God, it must be hard to be born into a role of mythological stature, to hold up some ideal on behalf of a nation and a world, not having a choice to do so, and being human of living in a family, of having struggles and insecurities and issues just like us. But how dreadful to have your story in a fictionalized form broadcast to the world for millions of people around the world, including Eric Stell, to be entertained by. I'm getting increasingly uncomfortable with this. And here's the problem. It actually is good for our human souls, our spirits, to be vulnerable and honest. What makes the Alcoholics Anonymous community so rich and life-giving is the fact that people can be vulnerable and honest with one another and know that they are loved. To be able to say, I'm an alcoholic, this is the damage my alcoholism has done to me and to my loved ones, uh, and to be greeted with love and support to carry on in sobriety. It is good for us to be vulnerable. It is good for us to choose to tell one another about our brokenness because the broken, we know about it. Our sense of self and who God is in our lives is in many ways defined by our brokenness, but we can never have intimacy until another person knows it and in knowing it, loves us. Spiritual formation requires confession for that very reason. I never like it. I'm willing to confess my sins in retrospect. I never want to confess them while I'm in the midst of it. But it's good for us and necessary if we're going to believe the love that's around us. And the problem with the crown, as I'm increasingly seeing it, is it is telling a form of the truth and making it very public. But it is not their choosing to tell the story and it is not being told to a people who love them. It's to a consuming world full of judgment. When Jesus came into this world, the demons yelled out when they saw him, I know who you are, son of David. Everything the demons said was true, and Jesus silenced them, because they were the worst people to be announcing that truth. And it will be healthy for the royal family, as for all of us, to confess our sins to one another. 
but it is never our job to do it for someone else. That's just gossip. It is not love. So I might have to stop watching it, but I doubt I'll be able to. <laughs> but my thought is, hold one another's stories tenderly. They are a full and complete life. And someone's sorrow is never our entertainment. It should always evoke our compassion. Let us pray. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. In the darkness of the evening, the eyes of my heart are awake to you. In the quiet of the night, I long to hear again intimations of your love. In the sufferings of the world and the struggles of my life, I seek your graces of healing. At the heart of the brokenness around me and in the hidden depths of my own soul, I seek your touch of healing, O God, for there you reside. In the hidden depths of life, O God, there you reside. You turn a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. When it seemed there was no hope, I have seen your light in the eyes of a child. When it seemed there was no joy, I have heard your delight in the voice of a friend. When it seemed that life was stale, I have smelled the freshness of sunlight on my skin. When all seemed emptiness, I have touched your presence in the hand of a stranger. When the future seemed barren, I have tasted life's moisture on the lips of another. Thanks be to you, O God, for your embodied love. Open my senses to your presence, that I may love you and care for you in all things. I invite your prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. From the Book of Common Prayer. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend to the sick Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. You have given me eyes to see with, O God, and ears to hear life's sounds and sorrows. And yet my seeing and hearing, like my tasting and touching, are wounded and weakened by failures. As rest can heal the sores of a body and sleep restores its strength, so may your angels of grace visit me in the night, that the senses of my soul may be born afresh. Visit my dreams with messengers of grace, O God, that the senses of my soul may be born again. Amen. Good night, Kick Harbor. <laughs>